Hey, this is Mr. Buffington. Today we're going to look at order of operations. A little bit more complicated than previous lessons on order of operations. And this is why. Basically, here are the points about order of operations that are going to make it a little bit more complicated than what we've done before. In the past, we've talked about completing parentheses first, then the items inside of parentheses, or inside of inside of parentheses, then items with any exponents. We haven't really worked with that much in pre-algebra, but they will come up. Then multiplication and division get done in the order they appear from left to right. So it's not multiplication, then division. It's multiplication or division, whichever you come to when you're moving from left to right. Addition, subtraction, the same as multiplication. If you come to subtraction first, you do that first. If you come to addition first, you do that first. Start at the left, move to the right. So we talked about that in the past. Some other parts of the order of operations that aren't always mentioned are that when you have fractions like this, the fraction bar in the middle, it implies a grouping symbol. So it's like you have to do what's on top first, like it's inside of parentheses, and then solve what's on the bottom. And we're going to look at that. We're going to see several questions like that with the fractions we deal with today. The other part, and this one here is a little bit more subtle and usually doesn't matter, is that if you have 3x, that is implied as being one term and that would get done first. So 3x would get done first, then you would divide that by 4 times y. So you'd multiply 4 times y, multiply 3 times x. You can see where this would be a little bit of a problem in the question I've given down here. because. If you wrote it out as 3 times x divided by 4 times y times 5, and we wrote it all out, then you would have to do first this multiplication, then you would divide that by 4, then multiply it times y. And the, so it's a little bit subtle. It doesn't happen very often. In fact, you probably won't see any questions that happen like this, but I wanted to bring it up as a part of order of operations that's not usually talked about, it's a little bit more complicated. All right. So if you see numbers like this with a coefficient and a variable, you solve them first. You solve 3x, solve 4y, and then solve everything else. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So we're going to solve this expression with 2x being equal to 2 and y being equal to 5. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to substitute. 2 times 2 plus 3, and then 4 plus 2 times y, 2 times 5. And in both cases, I have multiplication and addition on both the top and bottom of this fraction. I'm going to do the multiplication first because order of operation says that that gets done first. 2 times 2 is 4, and on the bottom, 2 times 5 is 10. I'm going to bring this one up here. 4 plus 3 is 7. 4 plus 10 is 14. And then we would reduce this fraction to being in lowest terms by dividing both the top and bottom by 7 to give us our final answer of 1 over 2. So this is working, again, with a little bit more complicated order of operations, simple, and then doing the top first and the bottom first, and then simplifying at the end. If you wanted to divide that one divided by two and write it in a decimal of 0 0.5, that would be fine too. Whatever you do at the end here kind of is fine, as long as you first solve what's on top, solve what's on the bottom separately, and then simplify afterwards. All right, here's a more complicated one, 20 divided by n plus m, 12 minus n minus m. So we're going to substitute in for our first step. That's all we're going to do. n equals 3, m equals 1. So we substitute in there. We're going to do the same thing where we substitute n is equal to 3, m is equal to 1. So now I have 20 divided by 3 plus 1, which is 4, and 12 minus 3 minus 1, which is 2. I'm going to come up to here. 20 divided by 4 is 5. 12 minus 2 is 10. And I'll simplify that. I divide the top 
by 2 and the bottom by 2. To simplify this, or divide it by 5, I'm sorry. Divide both the numerator by 5 and the denominator by 5 for my final result of 1 over 2. I seem to like that fraction for some reason. 1 half. It's a nice fraction to end with. All right. Let's solve this one here. I guarantee the answer for this one is not going to be 1 half. We're going to solve this one where n is equal to 2. So we're going to substitute in there 9 times 2 minus 2. And then this will be, again, 2 plus 5 plus 3 times 2. Now, like I said earlier, we're going to want to make sure to do, do what's inside the parentheses first. But there's an implied parentheses around these terms, 9n. So we can solve them at the same time. 9 times 2, 18. And that's going to be separated by this. But we solve what's inside the parentheses. 2 plus 5 is 7. And then 3 times 2, which is 6. So because these are separated by addition and subtraction, I can kind of solve this part by itself, then this part, then this part separately, knowing that I'm not going to be adding or subtracting any of them until the end. 2 times 7 is 14. And now I'm going to go ahead and solve. 18 minus 14 is 4. 4 plus 6 is 10. And that'll be my final answer. So the final answer when n equals 2 is that this is expression is equal to 10. Here's one more that's a little bit more complicated. This will be the last one that I solved in this mini lesson, showing you exactly the same principles that we saw before. 15 plus 3 times the quantity of 2 minus 2 minus 4 times the quantity of 2 plus 9. I'm going to solve inside the parentheses first. 2 minus 2 is 0. 2 plus 9 is 11. Now I'm going to, again, do my multiplication from left to right. So I'll start off with multiplying 3 times 0, which is 0. And then I'm going to subtract 4 times 11, which is 44. So now I will add and subtract in one step from left to right. 15 plus 0 is the first one I come to. 15 plus 0 is 15. And then I'm going to finish off by subtracting 15 minus 44 to get my final answer of negative 29. All right. So again, negatives, positives, fractions, whatever, we're working with the order of operations. And we need to follow all of those steps. And then I just wanted to add in this time that there are some kind of subtle rules with order of operations that aren't necessarily discussed as often, but are very important, especially when we start substituting variables and moving down, that we solve all of these in the correct order.